So this is a joint paper together with uh, um, Giacomo Bazzani and Raffaele Guetto from the University of Florence. And uh, this uh, particular uh, paper here focuses on fertility decision making under conditions of uncertainty. And in particular, we try to address the effects of COVID-19 induced uncertainty on fertility intentions in Italy. The uh, starting point of this presentation is the well-established fact that the increasing speed, dynamics and volatility of outcomes of globalization and the exponential rate of technological change make it increasingly difficult for individuals to predict their future, choose between alternatives and form strategies. And the Great Recession has renewed the view that globalization is unpredictable and out of control. On this backdrop, COVID-19, the COVID-19 disaster entered our lives and created an enormous uncertainty shock. So altogether, this state of affairs generates an extraordinary level of contingent economic uncertainty, which at least we try to argue, might strongly affect family life courses. But our point is, do we really understand economic uncertainty? The formal definition of economic uncertainty is quite clear the lack of clarity about future economic prospects, which in economic terms means a non-probability distributions to possible outcomes. So already from this definition, it's clear that uncertainty is about the future, not about the present or the past. And that uh, cumulative employment disadvantage and its perception just identify what we can refer to as the statistical shadow of the past and tell us little about uncertain future. So con consequently, to properly address the effects of economic uncertainty on family dynamics on fertility, we need to change perspective, recognizing that economic uncertainty is a forward-looking notion. And in particular, with this presentation, we argue that uncertainty needs to be conceptualized and operationalized, taking into account that people use works of imagination producing their own narrative of the future. So from this point of view, personal narratives of the future are imagined futures embedded in social elements. In a couple of recent papers, we tried to um, advance the narrative framework. According to this framework, personal narratives of the future are potent driving forces of reproductive decisions, irrespective of structural constraints and contingent subjective perceptions. So the aim of this presentation is to test whether in the era of uncertainty, net of factors that operationalize the statistical shadow of the past, young adults postpone fertility because their narrative of the future is uncertain. And in this context, in particular, the COVID-19 induced uncertainty might have uh, um, gained, the, the relevance of subjective states and narratives of the future may gain relevance. This we can refer to altogether about the shadow of the future that may gain the upper hand over traditional fertility predictors, what in the literature can be called shadow of the past. And in this context of COVID-19, induced uncertainty. Unfortunately, Italy offers a unique case study. You may have seen this uh, slide already in the morning when Raffaele Guetto presented the effect, presented the effect of COVID-19 uncertainty on marriage intentions. Italy uh, faced uh, the, the longest complete lockdown experience, two months in total. Italy is the first severe case of COVID-19 pandemic in the Western world. At the end of April 2020, when we collected our data, Italy had about 25,000 deaths due to COVID-19, and the media played a very strong role. Daily at 6 p.m. seems a bit caricatural, but it was really uh, like that. Italians gathered in front of the TV for the official updates on the pandemic. The TV announcement of the President Conte had more than 70% of share. So on this uh, uh, context, we are addressing uh, several research questions. What has happened to childbearing plans during this unexpected source of uncertainty about the future? Are fertility intentions discouraged by the pandemic? And more analytically, can the impact of the pandemic on fertility intentions be explained by the objective exposure to the virus and its socioeconomic consequences? Or is it better grasped by rising uncertainty about the future also spread by the media? 
to address these questions, we relied on an online survey. The, these are data we collected at the end of the lockdown, in the last week of the lockdown. The data were collected at the uh, premises of the survey company Lucid, which is known for a high academic reputation for its quality and rigor of data collection. The survey is a combination of a longitudinal survey. We are expecting a follow-up in the next month and experimental approach. The total sample is composed by around 4,000 individuals and we, had, um, we targeted men and women aged 20 to 40, setting quotas for um, gender, age and region in the center and, north and south of Italy and province in the north. You might uh, remember that uh, in the first wave of the uh, coronavirus pandemic, the northern part of Italy was especially severely hit by uh, the virus. That's why we set quotas for provinces in the north of the country. In the survey, we are collecting a series of variables to operationalize the shadow of the past elements of the narrative frameworks. We are collecting past experience and personality uh, traits, status and objective exposition to coronavirus, so direct and indirect contact with coronavirus, media exposure, TV and web, labor market situation, employment, social class, and transitions to not employment or any smart work following the pandemic. We are also collecting uh, um, questions about perceptions, sense of insecurity regarding one's own health, labor market situation, the diffusion of the pandemic, and the general political and economic situations. But we also try to operationalize the shadow of the future. We, try, we are asking questions about expectations. How long do you think will it take before your personal situation comes back to it? pre-pandemic condition, and how long do you think will it take before the economic and social situation of Italy comes back to its pre-pandemic condition? And also we ask questions about family imaginaries, which is a crucial source of agency when people imagine their future. And here we rely on the literature on happiness and effective forecasting, and we ask how much having another child would make you happy. The fertility intentions in January before the coronavirus pandemic, were you planning to have a child in the following three years? We are asking the questions on a zero to 10 scale. And today, do you plan to have a child in the next three years? Three years. What I'm showing you now are the changes in the fertility intentions because of the lockdown. So I'm not showing determinants of fertility intentions. These are determinants in the change in the fertility intentions in January and during the lockdown. The, this is an OLS regression on the change in fertility intentions. Our main explanatory variables are imaginary expectations, perceptions. Then, of course, we are controlling for the current employment status the past experiences and the level of fertility intentions in January. And we also estimated model through a multinomial logistic regression to analyze the probability of fertility intentions decreasing, increasing, or remaining the same as before the pandemic. I have no time to um, illustrate in detail all the model findings. I will just uh, try to pick up uh, some key uh, results. Our results, generally speaking, suggest that perceptions, expectations, and imaginaries do play an important role in the change of fertility intentions after the pandemic, net of all the shadow of the past elements included in the model equation. Those who reduce their fertility intentions are those who feel insecure about their health, work, and economic conditions, and those who have a more pessimistic expectation about the return to normality. Regarding the imaginary, a strong positive imaginary towards having children mitigates the negative impact of the pandemic. While this uh, slide summarizes the effect of objective elements and the employment condition, as you can see, the objective status only played a minor role in the adaptation of fertility intentions during the pandemic. And what is more, part of the effects of the objective measures are shaped by perceptions, expectations, and imaginaries. 
We, uh, in particular, the effects of job losses and temporary interruptions of work during the lockdown, at least we found so, are not related to changes in fertility intentions. Then with this slide, I really would like to show you a bit more into the magnitude of the effects we are talking about. By estimating a multinomial logistic regression, we evaluated and compared the predicted probabilities of decreasing or increasing fertility intentions in light of the pandemic. If you look first at the uh, left panel, the findings show that the more negative expectations about the return to normality, the higher the probability of decreasing fertility intentions during the pandemic. For example, net of all the other covariates included in the model equation, for those who did not perceive any change in their personal situation, the probability of decreasing fertility intentions is 10%. While for those who expect that the return to normality will last more than two years, have a probability of decreasing their fertility intentions of about 25%. On the other side, on the right panel, you see that the more negative expectations about the return to normality, the lower the probability of increasing fertility intentions during the pandemic. But to also have a more substantive uh, um, result and a more uh, causal effect of the lockdown, at the end of the survey, we also presented to the respondents a mock news bulletin concerning the expected end of the pandemic emergency. We here we, we, we here are operationalizing a sort of an experimental approach. Respondents were randomly assigned to one of five different expected duration before the return to normality. We then asked about their fertility intentions in the next three years in light of the expected duration of the emergency and analyzed changes with respect to previously stated intentions. I have no time to uh, present in detail this mock news uh, bulletin. I just would like to attract your attention that the bulletin was, is, was exactly the same for all the respondents. It was, it was only uh, differing in the uh, expected length of the pandemic, three months, six months, 12 months, two years, more than two years. I perfectly know that, look, that looks a bit funny that we were uh, proposing a scenario of three months or six months, but at least this was uh, our proposal in uh, uh, March and seems actually that um, seems reasonable, seemed reasonable at that time. Two minutes, Daniela. Yes, I will make it. The, um, so I'm showing you now the results of this causal impact of a new narrative of the future uh, by uh, showing the change in fertility intentions before and after the treatment. The main explanatory variable are the treatment, so our five randomized scenarios. Then we are controlling for a call. This recall dummy is a validity check of whether our manipulation in fact worked. Then we have a series of uh, control variables and the level of fertility intentions in January. So our results suggest that the more negative the narrative of the future, the stronger the reduction of fertility intentions after the treatment. As you can see in the left panel, this is the model without control variables. On the right uh, panel, you have the model with control variables. In an experimental approach of this kind, uh, the randomization already controls for any alternative explanations. In fact, including the coverage in the model only improves the statistical precision of our estimate. So summarizing, regarding the shadow of the past elements of the narrative framework, we find that objective indicators of individuals' exposure to health and economic consequences played a very limited role in reshaping individuals' fertility plan during the pandemic, while we did find a prominent role of the shadow of the future variables. Perceptions of insecurity and especially expectations and imaginaries came out as crucial moderators of individuals' adaptation to a new context characterized by overwhelming uncertainty. And then finally, through our experimental approach, we also provided a causal evidence of the impact of a new shared narrative of the future on fertility intentions. So I'm uh, Concluding that uh, uh, more research is needed to address the role of personal and shared narratives about economic uncertainty in the study of family dynamics in the era of globalization, technological change, and now 
even coronavirus pandemic. Thank you.